converts to word and follows the venous drainage. Same like mo in actually most of the parts of the body, the lymphatic drainage is followed by the, is also al almost accompanied with the venous, venous drainage. However, lymph from the tip of the tongue, apex of the tongue, frenulum underside the ventral surface, frenulum, and central lower rib, lip runs an independent course. Exception of other than that, there will be same as the venous drainage. So limb from the tongue takes four roots. What are those roots? Limb from the posterior third, posterior third drains into the superior deep cervical lymph nodes. So we have a posterior third here, basically this one, and it supplies, it, 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 the, the lymph is drained into the superior deep cervical lymph nodes because under that there is an inferior deep cervical lymph node that's why you need to remember these were the superior the posterior goes to the superior still the deep cervical lymph nodes and limb from the medial part of the anterior two thirds medial part of the anterior two third this green region right they goes directly to the inferior deep cervical lymph nodes so Posterior one third, we have two here, okay? So posterior one third, we have superior deep cervical lymph nodes and medial part of the anterior two third, we have inferior deep because they are inferior to the tongue. So just, just how you remember that they are inferior deep cervical lymph nodes. The other two, Okay. The other two limb from the lateral parts of the anterior two third, this pink region, drains to the submandibular lymph nodes. Yes, they go down and then there are submandibular glands. Then there will be some lymph nodes. Those are known as submandibular lymph nodes, right? Submandibular. So the, the lateral two thirds are supplied to the submandibular lymph nodes. And the apex, which was the remaining, the apex and the frenulum drains into the submental lymph nodes. Okay, so we have four. We have superior deep cervical lymph nodes taken from the posterior third, the anterior third medial part are the inferior deep cervical lymph nodes. So we have superior and inferior deep cervical lymph nodes. And then we have lateral two thirds, which drains into the submandibular lymph nodes and then submental lymph nodes. So four groups of lymph nodes are superior deep cervical lymph nodes, inferior deep cervical lymph nodes. We have submandibular lymph nodes and we have submental lymph nodes. These are the four drainages which are important to remember. Finally, the functions of the tongue. If you go to the functions of tongue, we know the tongue is the most important articular for speech production. Articulator means a group of muscle working together. So speech production, during the speech, the tongue can make an amazing range of movements, which helps in producing different kinds of sounds and shapes, alter the shape of the tongue. The primary function of the tongue is to provide a mechanism for taste. Okay, again, let's ask a random question. Zero six, Farooq. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, can you tell us that which cranial nerves, what cranial nerves are, are responsible for the taste, the gastric pathway? Can you name the cranial nerves? Uh, sir, uh, facial nerve. Good. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, and two more. Can you name? Yes, um, glossopharyngeal nerve. Yes. And uh, yes. vagus nerve. Good. So seven, nine, and ten. And Perfect. Ten. Thank you for your answer. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good job. So taste birds. Okay, so the primary function of the tongue is to provide a mechanism for taste. Taste buds are located on different areas of the tongue. What are those areas of the tongue? Another question goes to a 
pass. Roll number 36. Roll number 36, Abbas. Are you here? Yes, sir. Okay. Perfect. So do you know where the taste buds are located in the tongue? What are What is the term for those structures? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, in the fungiform and filiform, we late in... Very good, very good. You, you want to say papilla, right? Different yes, types of papilla, right? Okay. Perfect, perfect. Thank you for your answer, Abbas. Good job. Okay, let's continue. So the taste buds are located on different areas of the tongue, which Abbas has perfectly named papilla. He was naming different types of papilla, filiform, fungiform, circumvulate or volate, and then foliate, perfect, but are generally found around the edges. So taste buds are found in the tongue and also found around the edges. Nerve endings of the sense of the taste from the taste buds are present in the papilla and widely distributed in the epithelium of the tongue, soft palate, pharynx, epiglottis. Till now, we only knew that they were in the tongue, right? We already know. So now we also know there are also nerve ending for the special sense of taste in the soft palate, also in the pharynx, and also in the epiglottis. Okay. These are sensitive for four main tastes, bitter, sour, salty, sweet, and there was one more. And there was one more. The date is difficult. We go for Aisha. Aisha Zaheed, roll number 042. Can you name the fifth sensation? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir, umami. Perfect. They do, they, what do they taste? For what is the taste sensation? Sir, they taste for proteins and amino acids. Perfect. Savory, savory type. So when you name the taste, they there is savory type, savory. Okay, so bitter, sour, salty, sweet, and savory for umami. Amino acids. Roll number 42. Okay. Good job. The tongue is needed for mastication or chewing, sucking of food. Eating, deglutition or swallowing, drinking, kissing, and sweeping the mouth for food, debris, and other particles. Yeah, these are, these are the functions of the tongue. Trumpeters and flute players have very well developed tongue muscles and are able to perform rapid control movements or articulations. The articulator can perform articulations. What are articulations? Rapid control movements or distinct movements. So finally, clinical notes on the tongue. What are the common obvious or clinical findings we can find in our manjan? What is manjan? Outpatient department. Yes, many of you may be learning Chinese. Best of luck to them. Lacerations of the tongue. What is the laceration? This kind of laceration. This is a special appearance of one kind of laceration commonly known as tongue bite. This is a lateral anterior laceration of the tongue. Can be an ulcer. Lesion of the hypoglossal nerve. But when can be it can be an ulcer when it's deep. Okay. The second one is tongue tie or ankylo. Glossia or ankyloglossia. Okay, both are okay. And this is due to the large frenulum, which tongues tie the tongue to the floor. The frenulum is large, so it ties the tongue to the floor of the mouth or oral cavity. That's why it's known as tongue tie, common. And medical term is ankyloglossia. This baby is crying because he or she cannot move his tongue because of the tongue tie. So what we do for this, we perform a surgery. The ENT surgeon can perform surgery. Yes. So the third is lesion of the hypoglossal nerve. This hypoglossal nerve supplies to what kind of muscles? And if you name them, it's better. Asad Mukhtiar, roll number 056. 
Roll number 056, are you present? If you are not present, then we go to roll number five, 058. I'm Nasgar, roll number 058. Can you answer the question? Or you just let me know you are here. First, you let me know you are here. And if you don't know the answer, you say, okay, I don't know the answer, it's okay. But first you need to let me know you are here. Amna, hypoglossal nerve supplies to which kind of muscles of the tongue? Amna, you came, uh, I think you unmuted and then you went back. She went back, I saw her. Okay, and let's just first put a question mark. And if she comes later, Amna, then you can answer. So, this ask let us to further find a person. Osama Hamid, right? If I pronounce your name wrong, please correct me. Osama Hamid, roll number 055. Are you here? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, can you? Uh, let us know hypoglossal nerve supplies to what kind of or which muscles of the tongue? Sorry, sir. Sorry, okay, sir. so let me, okay, let me answer you. These are the extrinsic muscles except platoglossus. So these are, okay, uh, roll number 55, can you repeat with me? Platoglossus, yes, hyoglossus, and myoglossus. Yes, hyoglossus. Hyoglossus. Genioglossus. Genioglossus. Are, are the extrinsic muscles supplied by hypoglossal nerve? Are, are the, the extrinsic muscles? Extrinsic muscles, 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 muscles supplied by yes. hypoglossal nerve? Supply, supplied by hypoglossal nerve. Okay, okay. Thank you for your answer. Thank you. So lesion of hypoglossal nerve. The so hypoglossal nerve got an injury. The injury is known as lesion, medical term. The protrudic tongue, the tongue comes out and deviates towards the side of the lesion. So if it's the right side lesion of the hypoglossal nerve, the tongue will protrude out and go to the right side. And if it's left side, left side hypoglossal nerve lesion, the tongue will protrude out and go to the left. And the tongue becomes atrophied and wrinkled because of the denervation or lesion of the hypoglossal nerve. Let's see what it is. Can you remove this? Okay. So the lesion of hypoglossal nerve, let's see first what is, okay. So the lesion of hypoglossal nerve, let's see first what is action of genioglossus muscle. Genioglossus muscle, as we know, it helps to stick the tongue out of the mouth, right? So this hole is the genioglossus muscle. It takes origin from the mandible maxillary mandible and then insert it into the underneath of the tongue and towards the hyoid bone, right? This is the protrusion. So hypoglossal nerve lesion originates in the medulla. The lesion is in the medulla. Innervation is supplies to the tongue of extrinsic muscle of the tongue except platoglossus, right? And the function is for this muscle is movement of the tongue with the help of hypoglossal muscle, with the help of extrinsic muscles. So what happens is unilateral lesions can cause paresis, atrophy, furrowing. This is furrowing, you see, deepening, furrowing, fibrillation, fasciculation on the affected half. Fasciculation, fibrillation are related to the actin and myosin. On protrusion of the tongue, protrusion of the tongue is done by genioglossus. It deviates towards the affected side. Which affected side? The lesion side. For example, if you have, this is the patient right side, this is the patient left side, so he, he must have a lesion of the hypoglossal nerve at the medulla. And that's why this tongue is protruded and deviated towards the left side of the patient with the furrowing also seen on the left lateral side of the tongue. Due to unopposed action, because the, the genioglossus muscle here is par paralyzed, it cannot, because of the lesion of hypoglossal nerve, it cannot protrude and keep it to the left side. So it is more deviated to the right side. 
so unopposed action of the contralateral of the opposite contralateral means opposite side contra mean opposite and lateral mean this lateral half so contralateral genoglossus actually have more opportunity to pull this tongue towards this side so it shows like this right so lesion okay so flaccid paralysis so to where 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 the tongue is deviated the lesion will be there flaccid paralysis so the lesion is where here on the left or on the right side of the patient ipsilateral okay uh uzair khalid can you reply where is the lesion here in this the patient's tongue is deviated towards the right side right it looks like right side of the patient so the lesion will be on the it's on the right side and, and it's, it's, the it's on the right is, side uh, wrinkled sir so it's clearly a right side injury yes yes and the following is seen here okay so this is flaccid paralysis and there will be dysphagia this arthria dyspnea and difficulty chewing food dysphagia less time to left for us questions it's okay this was a difficulty in solving right okay so function of the tongue is the main function of the tongue is to detect taste there are more than 10000 taste buds found in our tongue due to which we are able to identify the taste 3 minutes are left for this class i want all of you to know that i'll be taking a random attend uh, here so we finish the tongue and there was a there is a video we go for the video let me start this is a long video and uh, how to share is like your screen is paused we share this video okay everyone be attentive we have 46 participants for the uh, students and let's share this uh, video is now is that we finish tongue so we are going to revise it the oral cavity or mouth though quite small is supplied by a dense network of nerves and blood vessels the nerve supply comes from the branches of six cranial nerves namely the trigeminal nerve facial nerve glossopharyngeal nerve vagus nerve and the hypoglossal nerve okay so here uh you remember there is another hypoglossal nerve which supplies the uh, muscles facial glossopharyngeal vagus 7 9 and oh. so are, are are for the gastritic pathway trigeminal nerve as you remember lingual nerve right supplies to the anterior two third of the tongue and then there is hypoglossal nerve supplying to the extrinsic muscles except platoglossus is supplied by the vagus mainly whereas the blood supply comes from the branches of the external carotid artery and the veins drain into the internal and external jugular veins first off let's start with the arteries the arterial supply comes from the external carotid artery branches the lingual artery facial artery and the maxillary artery the lingual artery is the second branch of the external carotid artery and arises at the level of the greater cornu of the hyoid bone it runs upwards and medially till it reaches the greater cornu and then dips downwards beneath the posterior belly of digastric and stylohyoid muscles creating a loop over the hypoglossal nerve The lingual artery then ascends almost vertically upwards to reach the tongue's inferior surface and continues as its terminal branch the deep lingual artery which supplies the anterior two thirds of the tongue. Okay so here the important branch is the deep lingual artery you need to remember this and it's coming from the external carotid artery you should remember yesterday we have saw, seen that in the frenulum lateral to frenulum is deep lingual vein and more lateral to it there was a deep lingual artery which is one of the major artery supplying and dear to third of the tongue the lingual artery gives off four branches 
Yes. The suprahyoid artery. Do you remember? It was lingual, sublingual, and this and that lingual. You remember the that? The dorsal lingual artery. Yes. The deep lingual artery and the sublingual artery. So it's very easy to remember. External colored artery gives a branch. Lingual artery, lingual artery gives many branches having name lingual in it, deep lingual, sublingual, dorsal lingual, and then there is suprahyoid because of height. This myelohyoid muscle. Yeah. So lingual external carotid, lingual artery, dorsal lingual, deep lingual, sublingual, and then suprahyoid for myelohyoid. So you do you need to remember this. Okay, this is important. The suprahyoid artery runs along the hyoid bone and supplies the omohyoid sternothyroid and thyrohyoid muscles. The dorsal lingual artery supplies the posterior one-third of the tongue, soft palate, palatoglossal fold, lingual tonsil, epiglottis. So this is the supply of the dorsal lingual. The soft palate, this is the bony part, hard palate, and this is muscular soft palate. So dorsal lingual, dorsal lingual, right? It supplies the soft palate, platoglossus, platoglossal fold, posterior one part of the tongue, lingual tonsil, and apical. Mm. The deep lingual artery supplies the tongue's ventral surface. The sublingual artery supplies the sublingual salivary gland, the genioglossus, geniohyoid, and oh. Mute. Okay. It doesn't matter. It's okay. And the mandible. Second, the facial artery arises from the external carotid artery at the level of the angle of the mandible just above the lingual artery. It then takes an S-shaped course deep to the posterior belly of digastric and stylohyoid muscles and crosses the mandible just anterior to the masseter muscle at a depression in the mandible termed the antigonial notch. Then the artery continues across the cheek to the angle of the mouth, giving rise to the superior and inferior labial arteries. Yes, so you remember the lip, lip, so upper lip, superior labial artery, labia from the lip, and lower lip is inferior labial artery. Branch of facial. Lips make important part of your face. That's how you remember facial artery, gives branch, superior labial, and inferior labial artery. The artery passes upwards along the side of the nose, giving rise to the lateral nasal artery. It then continues on the side of the nose as the angular artery and ends at the medial commissure of the eye. It gives off some branches to the oral cavity, including the ascending palatine artery to the soft palate, the tonsillar artery to the palatine tonsil, the submental artery to the chin, and the mylohyoid muscle. The glandular branches of the facial artery also supply the submandibular salivary gland. Important. Third, the maxillary artery, okay. which is the largest terminal branch of the external carotid artery and supplies deep structures of the face, including the mandible, pterygoid, infratemporal fossa, and segments of the pterygopalatine fossa. It arises posteriorly to the condylar neck of the mandible within the parotid gland. It then exits the parotid gland and passes anteriorly between the ramus of the mandible and the sphenomandibular ligament within the infratemporal fossa. As it passes through the infratemporal fossa, the maxillary artery can be divided in three parts. First part, the mandibular part. Second, the pterygoid part. And third, the pterygopalatine part. The mandibular part, also known as the bony part or first part, 
runs medially to the neck of the mandible and passes on the inferior border of the lateral pterygoid muscle and gives off the inferior alveolar artery. The inferior alveolar artery descends inferiorly following the inferior alveolar nerve and gives off a lingual and a mylohyoid branch. The small lingual branch supplies the lingual mucous membrane while the mylohyoid branch supplies the mylohyoid muscle. Then the inferior alveolar artery runs through the mandibular foramen to enter the mandibular canal, supplying the mandible and lower molars and premolars. Okay. Near the first premolar, the inferior alveolar artery divides into two terminal branches, the incisive branch, which supplies the incisor and canine teeth, mm -hmm. and the mental branch, supplying the chin. Next, the pterygoid part, also known as the muscular part, okay. or second. This you can see by yourself. We go towards the vein. Because whatever I teach in the class, that would be more than enough for you. This is just a revision. Okay. The veins, though, take a slight detour okay. and jump. We go back a little. We go for the vein. Yes, venous drainage. And eventually drain into the internal and external jugular veins. Okay. Some of the veins, though, take a slight detour and join into the pterygoid plexus which is a cluster of veins located in the skull's infratemporal fossa. Okay, this is important. This is major venous drainage of the oral cavity or tongue. This is known as pterygoid plexus. What is plexus is a cluster of veins located infratemporal fossa. This is located in inter infratemporal fossa. That's why it, this is this, this venous plexus is pterygoid plexus. Other than that, plexus is a group of uh, nerves or veins like pharyngeal plexus or yeah like upper limb may have right so important name pterygoid plexus venous drainage these include the greater and lesser palatine veins and the sphenopalatine veins from the palate the superior and inferior alveolar veins from the teeth and gingiva and veins from the muscles of mastication eventually the pterygoid plexus veins converge to form the maxillary vein, which drains via the branches of the retromandibular vein into the external and internal jugular veins. So the major path for venous drainage, the right plexus, pterygoid plexus, maxillary vein, and then just go to the external and internal jugular vein, as I will show later in the class. Okay, can we go to the lymph, lymphatic drainage? Okay, perfect. Oops. Uh, but I think I have not. Oh, I have taught you this. Hmm. Go with here. With respect to the lymphatic drainage, mm -hmm. the upper teeth, gingiva, and lip, lateral part of the lower lip, and the lateral portion of the anterior part of the tongue drain into the submandibular lymph nodes. The cheeks drain into the submandibular and preauricular lymph nodes. The central part of the lower gingiva and lip and tip of the tongue drains into the submental lymph nodes. Submental the medial nodes. portion of the anterior two thirds of the tongue drains into the lower deep cervical lymph nodes, lower and the posterior third. portion of the tongue drains into the superior, superior. deep cervical lymph nodes. You need to remember the these parotid names. glands drain into the superficial and deep cervical lymph nodes, whereas the submandibular glands drain into the deep cervical lymph nodes. Eventually, the deep cervical lymph nodes drain via the jugular lymphatic trunk into the thoracic duct on the left side and the internal jugular vein or brachiocephalic vein on the right side. Now the oral cavity's nerve supply is derived from a bunch of cranial nerves, namely the trigeminal nerve, facial nerve, glossopharyngeal nerve, vagus nerve, and the hypoglossal nerve, and a small portion of the spinal accessory nerve. The maxillary and mandibular division. This you can watch later. Muscle, muscular supply, and then to the teeth or the area. 
and then this was the arterial supply we already talked right and then there's venous supply and lymphatic drainage the four names submandibular lymph nodes submental lymph nodes pre auricular lymph nodes deep cervical lymph nodes they were superior and inferior this is related to mostly ear so you just remember submandibular lymph nodes submental and deep cervical lymph nodes they were superior and inferior supply comes by the trigeminal nerve facial nerve glossopharyngeal nerve vagus nerve and the hypoglossal nerve so nerve supply may mostly cover this so you remember lingual nerves come from trigeminal facial glossopharyngeal and vagus seven nine ten special sensation gustatory pathway hypoglossal extrinsic muscles except which muscle platoglossus which is supplied by the vagus nerve this is important to remember this was a good revision at the end of this uh, oral or tongue and not me and you need to watch this again and again you can remember as much as you can but at the least what we have seen in our class in the slide you have to remember that so let's go for the slide yes so this was a review on the tongue you can watch it again later i'll hear it and then you can remember as much as you can but this in the slide these are the most important okay so lymphatic drainage four okay so now we'll just go uh, to the palate all of you uh, maybe know palate from the above slides palate lies in the roof of oral cavity it has two parts hard and soft we go we just go quickly on this or sh should we go for the revision Okay, let's just go for the revision because we have seven or eight minutes. Let's go for the quick revision of, of we say, should say, class. Okay, so I went uh, slow today because this was important part of the slide, the muscles and the innervation and the supply. So, uh, most of you, I, as, I, as I have heard that you have not studied the anatomy of this region, uh, or if you have studied, you have forgotten. So I tried my best to uh, help you revise or learn this uh, part of anatomy, this region of anatomy of the body. So I hope you could, you could learn and you could revise this more. I have given almost five classes for this lecture, this topic, because it is important. If you know the structure, if you know the anatomy, then you will know the disease and where it's happening. If you don't know the structure, if you do not know the anatomy, you will know, okay, where is the dorsal of the term? Where is the ventral of the term? Where is that gland? You don't know that it will be difficult later on to know that about the disease of the oral cavity that's why we have we have given this these topics more time so today we have started again revised muscle extrinsic intrinsic especially we uh, revised uh, innervation movement we learned origin insertion and we saw the common things so that we could remember them uh, in the class for example like genio and silo under the tongue inserted and hyo and plateau sides of the tongue and hypoglossal nerve. So we try to remember as much as we can in the class. And then we went to uh, tongue musculature, nerve supply, movements we revised. And then we especially went to the sensory general sensation like touch, temperature, pain, and then special sensation like corda tempani and all that gastritic pathway, the video. And then again, revise the nerve supply. Then the blood supply, that video and other things are important, but these are the most important. And you should remember lingual artery, tonsillar artery, ascending pharyngeal artery. And then you should remember the lingual vein, takes the, drains the blood from most part of the veins of the tongue and then drains into the internal jugular vein. A lot of students may have forgotten they are not me this is the good time to revise i'm not talking about all the other parts of the not me or other other regions of the not me and just focus for i just want you to uh, memorize and at the time of examination reproduce these questions when i ask you about the anatomy of the tongue arterial supply important lingual facial maxillary 
and then lymphatic drainage for important groups, superior and inferior deep cervical lymph nodes, superior deep cervical lymph nodes, inferior deep cervical lymph nodes, and from there where they drain the lymph. And then we have lateral part, lateral parts of the anterior two third of the tongue, and then the apex to the submental lymph nodes. So these are important lymph node groups for the drainage. And then we have very important the function. You can add here umami. And then we have, or savory is better, savor the food. Okay, then we went for the clinical nodes, the tongue, laceration, tongue tie, and lesions of the hypoglossal nerve, which was this. And then the, the where there is a lesion, the tongue will be deviated to that part. So that's how you, we know this is related to that. Okay, this is a slide random. It has very less association with our Western medicine. This is usually used in the traditional Chinese medicine. I found it interesting to share. Here are on the basis of color and some deformity in shape. They diagnose the patient. For example, blood stasis, and these are some of the reasons here for uh, knowledge, general knowledge, you can look at them. May, maybe you will have a use in future, but this is purely traditional Chinese medicine. I found it interesting to share. Okay, so we have almost three minutes remaining. If you have any questions,